other day, I asked my son what he wants to be when he grows up. And he said he wants to be a policeman and a fireman and a doctor and an astronaut and a garbage man. And he didn't mean that he wants to be all those things at different phases of his life, no. He wants to do it all at once because he thinks he can. You see, to a child, the world is a playground. It's a new and wonderful place where anything is possible. It's as though we all come with this intuitive sense of the limitless, untapped potential that's on each one of our lives. But then, something happens. We grow up. And with age and experience, we learn that we are limited, that we can't do everything, that the world is actually a big, scary place where it's easy to get hurt. And so we learn to be cautious, to guard ourselves physically and emotionally. We become less and less willing to take risks, to try or to learn new things. And we come to grips with what we perceive as the new reality, that we're never going to be what we wanted to be when we were kids. And we become content to settle for less. But I think that the reality lies somewhere between the naivety of childhood and the pessimism of maturity. The truth is that we are full of untapped potential, but it's also true that for most people, that potential will remain largely untapped. And the reason that most people will never realize their full potential is because of one little word, fear. I think that one of the most tragic places you could visit is a cemetery. Not because of the people that are buried here, but because of what's buried inside of the people that are buried here. Think about all the books and songs that were never written, forgiveness that was never granted, ideas that were never developed, sermons that were never preached, so much potential that was never realized. So much has been buried and lost for all of eternity because somebody was afraid of being hurt afraid of criticism, afraid of rejection, afraid of financial difficulty or physical danger. It reminds me of a story that Jesus told in Matthew 25 about a man who went on a journey to a faraway land. Rather than letting his money sit in the vault, the master decided to divide it among three of his servants so that they could invest it and his fortune could increase while he was away. To the first servant, the master gave five talents. To the second servant, he gave two talents. And to the third servant, he gave one talent. The first two servants invested their money wisely and it doubled in value. But the third servant was very worried. The risk of losing the money gave him nightmares. And so rather than investing it, he buried it in the ground. When the master returned, he called his servants to see what they had done with his money. With the first two, he was very pleased. But with the third servant, the one who buried his talent, the master was very angry. The master called him a wicked and a lazy servant. He repossessed the one talent the servant had been given and had him cast into outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, Matthew 25, 30. I want you to notice the reason this servant gave for burying his talent. The servant said, so I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground, Matthew 25, 25. He buried his talent in the ground because of fear. You know what I find fascinating about that story is the reason that the servant gave for burying his talent in the ground. He said, so I was afraid and I went out and buried your talent in the ground. 
You know, fear causes a lot of people to bury their talents in the ground. I'm not talking about the ground in the cemetery or the ground in your backyard. Genesis 2-7 says that God formed man out of the dust of the ground. We are the ground, and people bury their talents within themselves because of fear. Fear of failure, fear of being made fun of, fear of hard work, fear of the unknown, spirits of fear, fear of man, and the list goes on and on. But here's the real tragedy, that life is so short, and you only live once, and what is buried in this ground is one day buried in this ground, and then it's lost forever. Notice that the servant was cast into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. The scholars disagree as to whether or not this verse is referring to hell. But one thing is certain, and I think it's the main point, it's talking about a place of deep regret, sorrow, and remorse over something that's been lost forever and can never be undone. You know, I hear a lot of people talking about the emotions that they'll experience when they arrive in heaven. Popular songs have been written about how we're gonna dance and sing for joy. But for many people, I think they're going to experience a very different emotion regret. Because in that moment, all of their earthly fears will seem so impotent and distant, like a hazy dream that you can't quite remember. But the impact of those fears will be felt for eternity, and it will be too late to go back and do what should have been done. And wave after wave of regret will pour over many people. No wonder Revelation 21.4 says that Jesus will have to wipe the tears from their eyes. The Bible says that it's appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. One of my favorite authors, A.W. Tozer, once said that he wasn't really concerned about being judged for the things that he had done in his life. It was the things that he could have done, but didn't do, that concerned him. My friend, what about you? If you were to stand before God right now in judgment, would you have anything to be ashamed of? Well, here's the good news. If you're watching this video, there's still time for you. If there's breath in your lungs, it means that God is not yet finished with you. He still has a purpose and you can fulfill it. Now, if this was just about your life and your happiness, I would say don't even worry about it. Stay at home, watch television and enjoy yourself. But there's something much greater at stake here. This isn't just about you. It's about your children. It's about your grandchildren. It's about the world that they're gonna grow up in. It's about the world that God loved so much that he sent his only begotten son to die for it. It's about God's purposes and His will in the earth. And I would say that's something worth taking a risk for. So I wanna challenge you to rise up, to stand up, to speak up, to take a risk, to do something, so that one day you'll hear these words from the Master. Well done, my good and faithful servant.